on WNYC, and welcome back to our special edition live from the green space on the resistance at one year old. And listeners, don't forget when we're in the green space, you can see us as well as listen to us because we live stream video. So you can go to WNYC.org and check it out or go to the Green Space's own website, which is thegreenspace.org. That's green with an E at the end of it, thegreenspace.org. Earlier, we heard from one of the key organizers of the travel ban protests. That ban also sparked another group to organize, artists. I'm joined now by four members of the Federation, a coalition of artists and arts organizations dedicated to keeping cultural borders open and to fighting against the defunding of the arts. They have designated the anniversary of the Trump inauguration as the first of a series of art action days starting this coming Saturday. My guests are artist, writer, producer, and filmmaker Tanya Selvaratnam, co-founder of the Federation, along with Laurie Anderson and others, Nell Breyer, artist and executive director at the Association of Marshall Scholars, who's on the cultural strategies and outreach team for the Federation, fashion designer Mara Hoffman, and Shirin Neshat, the Iranian-born visual artist. Welcome to all of you. Thank you all so much for coming to the Green Space. Thank you. And Tanya Selvaratnam, can you talk a little bit about the Federation's founding and what motivated it? Well, the Federation was inspired by Laurie Anderson, who was concerned about the increased threat to the closing of physical borders and wanted to figure out a way to keep cultural borders open. So we settled on this um, slogan, which is, Art is Essential to Democracy. And it was before the harmful effects of the current administration had taken effect, such as the travel bans. And we thought, how can we fight back against the political powers that might seek to divide us? And we thought that the arts was a good way to bring people together. So our hashtag is Art Unites Us and Culture Keeps Borders Open. And we should be clear for people who might Google blindly Federation, your group is in no way correct, co connected with the Federation for American Immigration Reform, or FAIR, a very different federation, but it's in the news, so it'll come up on searches. That's a kind of limit immigration organization. Your website is wearethefederation.org. Yeah, we're just more inspired say. by Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> we are the federation.org. Now, Brian, you want to talk about what's happening on Saturday? Yeah, we have a, an amazing lineup and inviting really everyone, all uh, the audience here, listeners around the country and around the globe to take part. If you go on the website, we are the federation.org, there's a, a toolkit of ideas and suggestions. We invite all of your suggestions as well. There's a wonderful playlist Lori Anderson put together with some hits. Uh, some, some old faithfuls and some wonderful tunes. Invite your friends and family to join a sing-along. There's, a, wonder, uh, there's a, a list of reading, um, some great American authors, James Baldwin and others. Pen America will be projecting some of that um, seminal text, American text around public spaces in this city, and we hope you, um, others around the country will be excited to join in. Um, there's a moment of sound at 3 p.m., Make Noise, you can uh, join partners in um, activating bridge, bridges across the country and lots of other ideas. So we are throwing open the doors and hope everyone will participate with that hashtag Art Unites Us. I guess I have to ask, considering our guests in the first hour, how do you envision the Art Action Day intersecting and hopefully not competing with the women's marches, which are the same day? There's a, there's a wonderful partnership. Partners. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, there are so many different movements um, and groups activating right now. It is one of the most exciting, though terrifying, times to be here in this country. And one of the things that I'm especially excited about is the ways in which people are finding to work together. So we have partnered with the Women's March Alliance, and we have deliberately scheduled most of our events, um, the flagship events that are happening in New York City, to coincide with the end of the Women's March. So in fact, we're doing a sing-along in the lobby of the Public Theater at 3 p.m. with Milk, who had the viral anthem Quiet last year. Everybody can sign up. We're also having a rally on the steps of the New York Public Library with writers from vulnerable communities, Andre Asaman, Sapphire, um, Justin Vivian Bond, Imani Uzuri, and then at night we're having dancing with an all-female mariachi band, Flor de Toloash, at the BAM Cafe. And those are all free. Can you each talk a little bit about why artists, or I don't know if we'll have time for everybody on this question, but, but Mara, you want to start on this, why artists have a special role to play 
in the resistance right now, if you use that word resistance, some people sneer, as you well know, and say they're good at painting and fashion design or whatever. That doesn't mean they have anything special to say about issues affecting my life. Well, I think that we are the upkeepers of culture, of beauty, and there's nothing wrong with that, and of joy, and all of those are so essential to this movement right now. And without it, it is so easy to shrink into a space of despair. So. For me, adding to that space is it's imperative. Um, and without really pushing for this voice to be heard, I think we're not doing our job as artists, as influencers, as designers, as creators. It's, it is part of our job to upli uplift and, and push that space. Sharon, do you want to talk about that from the perspective of a visual artist? Well, I think it's very important for artists today to be socially conscious, partially because we don't have a particular political agenda. Uh, we're not biased, and we can speak to the people and about the people. Um, and also, artists are made to be nomadic. Uh, we are used to crossing borders, and if the borders are closed to us, I, I don't know how we can be creative. Uh, today, most artists I know don't live in their place of birth. And finally, I think as an Iranian, uh, a place that we haven't had democracy or freedom of expression, and it's been so oppressive for so long, I just don't want to see this country um, to be like that. And I, I feel that people like myself who are living in exile, as immigrants, um, we absolutely must make sure that the doors are not closed. And elaborate on that, because you're someone, as you were just indicating, I, I think whose work is in many ways defined by borders in that you live here in exile from Iran. So talk about what the US has meant for artists like yourself and what's at stake if borders are more closed. I mean, I think the racially profiling uh, people is extremely dangerous, um, partially for people like us who feel extremely vulnerable because we're not welcome back to our own country, yet we feel destabilized in this country and it's a huge threat. Um, but just think about the amount of refugees that you will end up with uh, once people like us who don't really have a sense of home and not welcomed in particular nation. What happens to the future? We're just going to add to more and more refugees in the world. So I think the, the problem is local and global. And I think for us as Iranians, as Muslims, we obviously feel extremely um, frightened and horrified by this reality on both ends. Listeners, if you have a question for any of our guests from the Federation, a coalition of artists and arts organizations dedicated to keeping cultural borders open and to defighting against the defunding of the arts and their art action days starting this coming Saturday, 212-433-WNYC-433-9692. Or if you're here in the green space, you can raise your hand and we'll come around with a microphone. Sharon, let me stay with you for one more question on that. You just said that as artists, you're not political. You just want to connect with the people, if I heard you right. Um, but you gave a TED Talk, and you spoke of how you and your fellow Iranian artists were political artists because of the political situation there. You said you have no choice, and how you almost envy American artists because they had a choice. I wonder if you can talk about that and if you think that has changed now in the age of Donald Trump. Um, interestingly enough, uh, two days ago I was participating in a protest at Union Square uh, trying to support the people of Iran, the recent uprising and the prisoners that have since been arrested, tortured, and near death. So there is this moral um, responsibility of us who might have, whether as an artist or a cultural activist, or, uh, you know, to speak up and use our voice to bring attention. And uh, even though I am inherently not an activist, I am born in a cu culture. And I think slowly I find that this culture is also I belong to, is asking me to come out of my little bubble, which is the art world, and really uh, speak up, because I think time is asking us to speak up. And Mara Hoffman, I see you're holding a children's workshop at noon on Saturday as part of the Art Action Day. What will that entail? Yes, I, I really wanted to kind of approach this from the, the, the purest space of voice. So I'm collaborating with my husband, Javier Pinon, who's a collage artist, and bringing children together to, to create pieces that represent to them um, no borders and, and what that world looks like 
to them. And I think that they are at that closest place because hopefully they have not learned borders yet. So it comes from it comes from truth. And I think the more that we can look at that and celebrate that, the closer we get. And what about the role of your industry, the fashion industry, in this movement, given the international nature of that business, is xenophobia a particular particular threat to your work, I, I your mean, kind of work? Well, I think it's been really interesting to watch the fashion industry, especially over the past year, and um, what a unifier the actions have been for people to come together and join forces as opposed to being these separate entities, which we have been for a long time that there has been such unification to it and there is a collective consciousness that all creators, designers, artists are pulling from constantly. So to think that where we live is, is I mean we're obviously influenced from where we come from so much but artists and creators are channelers pulling from a creative consciousness so there's a, we have to be together on this. Let's take a phone call because one of the arts that's not represented here on the stage right now is architecture. And I think we have an architect calling in on line one. And it's Priyanka Hello. in Manhattan. You're on WNYC. Hello, Priyanka. Hi, Brian. Thank you for taking my call. I love, love, love your show. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I am part of a group called the Architecture Lobby. Uh, we can be found online and on Twitter and on Facebook. And one of the actions we uh, undertook when um, this administration released the RFP, which is Request for Proposals for the Southern Border Wall, was a movement called Hashtag Not Our Wall. And we felt that as architects who build all sorts of walls, uh, we should draw the public's attention to what is wrong and really sort of diverting about this act because the wall is not just at the border, the wall is in policies, the wall is at airports, the wall is at consulates, the wall is all through the way immigration is being changed right now. And we, we think, for one, that the border wall is sort of a stand-in um, for, for, you know, sort of a metaphor for this broader way of thinking. And we also think that when... Trump came to power, he promised massive uh, sort of investment on infrastructure, which is very, very needed, and the only infrastructure we're seeing getting built is this border wall. And we also find that um, sort of in solidarity with the people who actually build architecture, not just design it, that immigrant labor is very, very, very central to this industry, and um, there is a whole sort of broader aspect of immigration that architecture is using and is involved in. And given that our president is a New York developer, we also feel like there is something, that, an understanding that we bring to the table um, that we really would like to spread. We are a national organization, and um, the Not Our Wall movement is being led by our LA and uh, San Diego, San Francisco chapters. Uh, and we're putting out a publication very soon, if people would like to see it. Uh, they should go to our website in the coming weeks. It should be up shortly. And it really explores sort of this project uh, from various different aspects. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So and if they get so far as to put out requests for proposals for mm -hmm. architects to design a border wall, you're saying we will see an architect's walkout as some kind of demonstration, right? We already did that. Oh, you did that one. The proposal came out, and we put a call out as a, a sort of a, um, a demonstration for architects to walk out of their offices and tweet sort of empty office spaces, um, showing that we are against this. We had a fair bit of traction um, on it, and I should say the RSP is already out. And at this point, it is not architects who are involved. It, uh, it is, it's more sort of a larger uh, developer you know, involved, service right? engineering yeah. firms that bid um, on these things. And we yeah, do yeah. want to put pressure and, uh, you know, that there, there have been boycotts. For instance, I believe the city of San Francisco is going to boycott as, uh, you know, in public contracts, anyone who bids or works on the border Interesting. wall. Thank and you so much. I have to leave it there for time, but Priyanka, thank you so much for adding your voice. That was really interesting. And by way of segue, Tanya, I see one of the actions in the toolkit 
that your federation is putting out is to quote stage a bridge eruption <laughs> to sing, dance, chant on bridges. And I think part of the point here is that a bridge is the, the opposite, opposite of, of a wall, wall. right? <laughs> yeah, and in fact, I just want to um, tap into something that Priyanka was talking about, which was this notion of like subverting the wall. We actually have an action that's being staged by Brick by Brick, which is a group of artists, choreographers, and dancers, where they're staging human walls in solidarity in sister cities around the country. Um, so look out for that. And our idea with the bridge eruption is um, a couple of reasons. One is that this past January 20th, artists and arts organizations were encouraged to be silent in protest of the inauguration. Um, but on this January 20th, we want to encourage artists and their audiences to be louder and more visible than ever because there is going to be a need for outlets, for rage, for anguish, for trauma. And what better way than providing people with uplifting, joyful, ways to engage with each other because art brings people together. We might not be able to change the world as artists, but we can inspire people to change the world, and that's our hope. We have no ownership of the Federation. We provide the ideas for people to take the ball and run with it, and there are partners all over the country, from Lockhart, Texas, to Santa Fe, New Mexico, to Salt Lake City, Utah. There's an amazing thing happening in LA, Into Action, with one of our partners, For Freedom. It's a free exhibition in downtown LA. Here, we're taking over the Jefferson Market Library with Joanne Acolytis. Uh, the former site of the New York women's prison. She's staging uh, the next hundred years of activism. So those are just some examples. And Nell Breyer, as someone on the outreach team for the Federation, does that include reaching out beyond the cultural elites, quote unquote, in the art world or the, uh, their obvious patrons? Is, is the effort focused on getting beyond energizing the proverbial choir? Yeah, 100%. We've been talking to writers, to teachers, to educators, to Every and anyone who believes that art has impacted their lives in some way, it has tried to be as democratic and grassroots, um, opening up what we're doing to everybody who has an idea. So the, the concept is audiences, as much as artists, create engagement and create civic discourse. We want to use the day as a way of building engagement and participation. And your aim is also to fight, and I don't want this to get left out, the defunding of the arts, per se. It's not something Trump talks about a lot, though I think his budget director loves the idea. What's the nature <laughs> of the threat now? I think we saw um, one of the responses uh, and the reason this whole um, uh, project came about was in reaction to what happened at the public theater just a few months ago, where there was uh, a piece of work that uh, displeased some particular sponsors and they pull their funding and one of the hopes is that this network becomes a resource both legal financial fiscal and otherwise to help each other as organizations as well as artists not be threatened by that possibility well um sharon for you as a visual artist one of the big strategies employed by the national endowment for the arts after the political attacks against it in the 1980s and 90s was to be sure and support programs in red states and step back from controversial works. I wonder if um, you have any view as an individual working visual artist if that is working and whether it was worth whatever artistic compromises were involved. I mean, I, personally, I've never made any work that is not controversial. <laughs> and so my my critics have ranged from the Islamic Republic of Iran to the critics of, uh, of the, you know, the art world and and in this government. So I think we have to really fight against that kind of categorization and allow artists to have that freedom of expression, even if their work is controversial. Uh, and and um, so I th I'm very very much uh, for fighting against. Tanya, that. any view on on that? Have you been watching that uh, evolution over the years after that? kind of, you know, political retrenchment of the National Endowment for the Arts, or before your time? Well, I think that it is a tragedy in this country. We don't recognize the importance of arts education from an early age and the efforts by those in political power to take that experience with art 
a way because the more that I think people from a young age experience art and recognize its transformative power, the less divided we will be, which is why I think art is so important because it does bring people together, which is why theaters and libraries and movie theaters and gathering spaces like this are so important and they need public federal support in order to survive. So I think the more people realize that art is important, it's not just for the elite. People ask us, are we preaching to the choir? I've heard you know, a very inspiring person to me, Anna DeBeer Smith said, even the choir needs a rehearsal. So, <laughs> so. Good so. one. And Mara, you want to get in a last quick word, if you know this, about how we can follow the Art Action Day Saturday and then subsequent ones on social media. I see one of the suggested actions on social is to project quotations of the role of the arts from various thinkers, like this suggested one from James Baldwin, the purpose of art is to lay bare the questions which have been hidden by the answers. Um, well, definitely tune in on Facebook. And also, I would encourage everyone to come up with their own actions to participate as well, that this is an open action, and that wherever you are, join in with this. And, and let's hear you, too. And the more that we can encourage um, from wherever you are, no matter how big or small you think that your voice is, like please join with it. So I would encourage that. Um, come on. And we have to leave it there. Thank you to the great staff here at the Green Space and our in-house audience for showing up this morning. Showing up is half the battle. And we thank the artists from the Federation, Tanya Selvaratnam, Nell Breyer, Mara Hoffman, and Shira Neshat. Check out our website for links to all our guests if you want to know more at wnyc.org. Their website is wearethefederation.org. Thank you, everybody here at the Green Space, for coming. And thanks, everybody out there for listening.